this is our standard model. We can do the same analysis with the rigid weight model, which in fact would be even easier, but lead to the same conclusion. So what is our labor demand curve here? So you remember the labor demand relation that we've seen is that uh, right the labor demand curve, labor demand relation in these types of model is given by this. So we can use that labor demand relation here, except that we plug in the rigid wage, so we get that. <coughs> a is equal to 1 plus tau times W, where W here is just omega A gamma. So this is our um, labor demand curve. So notice that um, in, for an equilibrium to exist, it has to be that A, the productivity, be larger than the wage that you pay worker. That's because um, if that's not the case, you know, employing a worker is never profitable, and then firms will just shut down, and you know, there will be no labor market. Um, so it has to be that this is, that, uh, this is the case. That means um, that this gives us a condition, the parameter of the model. It has to be that a one minus gamma divided by omega has to be strictly greater um, than one. Otherwise, you have no labor market. This is a condition that um, we'll come back to in a little bit. This is just a restriction of the parameter of the model, um, just to make sure that wages are not too high. Okay, so uh, we have our labor demand curve. So now we want to know uh, what happens when the reporting cost goes to zero. So we have to uh, look a little bit and open up a little bit that labor demand curve relation to figure that out. So we can reshuffle terms. The labor, de, uh, the labor demand curve becomes we can rewrite it as A 1 minus gamma divided by omega that's just by dividing uh, by the weight on both sides uh, has to be equal to 1 plus 2 and then 1 plus tau what we said is that it's <coughs> We can you know write it as one plus R S divided by Q of theta minus R S. Okay. Now if we reshuffle these things a little bit, this has to be equal to A one minus gamma over omega is equal to Q of theta divided by Q of theta minus R S. Okay, and then uh, what we can do to simplify the fraction on the right hand side. So note that Q of theta is mu, just a scalar in the production function, times theta minus eta. Um, so here I'm assuming Cobb Douglas matching function, which is a typical assumption. So that's Excuse me, that's under Cobb Douglas matching a function of the form M is equal to mu u eta times v one minus eta. Okay, so here I've just assumed a Cobb Douglas matching function just to simplify and to be able to have a closed form expression for the vacancy um, filling rate Q. Um, otherwise, it, you know, it's hard to take limits if we just don't have a precise expression for, uh, for, for our probability uh, Q. Okay. So once we assume Cobb Douglas matching function, we have an expression for Q. So now we can rewrite the labor demand relation. 
as follows. So uh, what I can do is that I can put one, one minus, and here I have Rs, and what I'm going to do is divide everything by Q of theta. Uh, and if I divide everything by uh, Q of theta, like this, so that's what uh, what we have. I'm doing this, you will see, is to be able to have theta showing up only in one place in the fraction, so that then I can take my limit when R goes to zero. And then if I use the expression for Q of theta, if I plot this in here, what I'm going to get is a one minus gamma divided by omega is equal to one over one minus uh, so I divide by Q of theta, I get R S and we divide it by mu here times theta to the power of eta. Okay, great. Um, so this is um, this is good. Uh, so if we invert both sides of the equation of the Lebordiman equation, what do we get? We get that one minus R s over mu theta eta has to be equal to. Uh, Omega divided by a uh, one minus gamma. All right, and then uh, if I reshuffle that one last time, I get that Rs over mu theta theta has to be equal to one minus omega a one minus gamma. Now the thing that we have here. 1 minus omega a1 minus gamma. So we had said we have this restriction that a1 minus gamma over omega is positive and uh, you know, strictly bigger than 1. So it's inverse this, this term here. This is between 0 and uh, this is um, between 0 and 1. Okay, because a1 minus gamma divided by omega is strictly bigger than 1. Here we just invert it, so it's between 0 and 1. And as a result, 1 minus this. This is also going to be between zero and one. Okay. So uh, it's just these are just parameters, and the, uh, once we uh, combine all these parameters together, we get some parameter that's between zero and one. So we can rewrite the labor demand relation as follows. We can the labor demand relation is going to say that R S divided by mu theta eta is equal to uh, some parameter that I can call, call k, where k is between 0 and 1. Okay? And k is a function of the other parameters uh, that we've seen uh, earlier. k, in fact, is 1 minus omega divided by a 1 minus gamma. Okay? That's how we define k. Just to simplify, so that's what we have to, to say. So this is our labor demand relation here. So now the question is what happens when r goes to zero? So when r goes to zero, this here goes to zero. Um, now, so this means that this is dragging the entire uh, left hand side towards zero. However, the, this k here, this parameter, this is strictly bigger than zero. Okay, so the product of r, s, theta to the power of eta divided by mu is going to zero, but it must be always equal to k, which is strictly uh, bigger than zero. So the only way that this works is if theta goes to infinity. This has to go to plus infinity, such that the product r, theta, eta goes to some finite number, such that, um, such that the equation remains valid. If you want another way to see it, is that you can rewrite the equation as theta Theta is k mu divided by rs. That's maybe an easier way to see it. Uh, that's the labor demand relation. And so from here, you see immediately that if this goes to zero, 
the R in the denominator, um, then theta eta, it's going to go to plus infinity. Okay, you see it immediately. Uh, you see it immediately here. So we get that the limit of theta, which again, this is the theta given by the demand relation, which is a function of R, the routing cost, when the routing cost goes to zero, is as before infinity. Exactly as this is in the rigid wedge model, but you get the same result as in the um, standard model. So this is exactly as in the standard model. And then, so this is what happens to the demand, but the demand here determines the equilibrium tightness. So we infer that the limit when R goes to zero of the equilibrium tightness, theta is plus infinity. Which is going to be key from that, you know, and then we can do we can do all the all the other. Um, labor market variable, so we infer that the limit of employment when R goes to zero, which is just the limit, because once we have tightness, we know that employment is given by the supply, so the limit of the labor supply at theta when R um, goes to zero, <coughs> but um, theta goes to infinity, so the labor supply is going to go to, uh, the labor supply is going to just go to H, the size of the labor force. Okay, and then from that, we infer that the limit of the equilibrium unemployment when R goes to zero, which is the limit of um, H minus L when R goes to zero, since L goes to H, that's just equal to zero. So once again, here, uh, exactly as in the standard model, when the recruiting cost goes to zero, in our model with rigid wage, uh, the tightness goes to infinity and employment goes to the, you know, so that everybody is employed and therefore the unemployment rate and the level of unemployment goes to zero. So once again, once again here, what we find is that uh, there is, uh, Uh, no unemployment when uh, matching frictions vanish. And from that we infer that matching frictions are the source of all unemployment. So we infer that all unemployment is frictional here too. Okay, uh, so all unemployment is going to be frictional also in the rigid weight model, exactly as in the standard uh, model. Okay, so we really cannot capture this idea of job ration. The idea is that there's a lack of job in the economy, that even without frictions, some workers will remain unemployed. That doesn't exist here. Okay, 